Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an overview of this MSI Z68A GD65 socket 1155 Z68 chipset motherboard. Let's start off with a closer look at the box itself. First off we have a big old logo here indicating military class 2 and this is MSI telling you that the components they're using on the board itself are very high quality. Uh, for instance, these superfarite chokes can support 30% more current under load. Uh, the caps, for example, have a higher thermal stability also under load. So basically for overclockers or for long-term users, you're going to get more quality. As a result, they also have a three-year warranty from the manufacturer in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico for this particular board. Uh, let's talk more about the specs for the board itself. Looking up here on the top right, uh, we have support for both the integrated GPU of your Sandy Bridge, pro Bridge processor as well as a discrete GPU uh, to use those in tandem by way of Virtue technology provided by Lucid Logix. We also have two-way support for NVIDIA SLI or AMD Crossfire, Windows 7 support of course. This little logo here indicates that this motherboard supports Intel's second generation core processors. Those are Sandy Bridge, 1155 socket, and of course we have the Z68 chipset. Down here, uh, we have an OC Genie 2 software, which is MSI's overclocking software, which will overclock uh, your memory, your CPU, and your iGPU in one second, um, which is uh, automatic overclock, but if you're so inclined, you can try that out. Also, uh, we have hard drive performance boost. That's by way of Z68 chipset and Intel's smart response technology. That will allow you to use an SSD and a mechanical hard drive uh, combined. You use the SSD as a cache to improve your hard drive's performance. And now let's take a look inside the box to see what sort of accessories and other goodies we get. Uh, we have MSI's M connectors, which will assist you with connecting your front panels from your computer case to the motherboard itself. It's very handy to have those. Uh, we, of course, have some serial ATA cables. I believe this is all of them. Uh, we have four in total. Uh, they have little white heads, and it looks like all four of them have L brackets on one end, and these are all serial ATA revision 3 compatible cables. And this over here is just a little power adapter that will take a Molex power plug and transfer it to a serial ATA power plug. Just a little extra power adapter for you there. Uh, we have an MSI SLI bridge. That's for combining two NVIDIA-based video cards together in SLI. Uh, if you want to do Crossfire, generally that bridge comes with your Crossfire-enabled video card. Here's your back panel input-output shield. It is black and has ports there for all of your input-outputs on the back of the motherboard. Uh, we have the MSI manual here, which you'll want to keep on hand while you're doing your build. Also have the MSI uh, utilities and driver's disk. Uh, generally, it's best to go online to the MSI website to download the most recent drivers for your uh, motherboard, but uh, nice to have that on as well, especially if your network card does not have a driver for it by default when you install Windows. Uh, we also have an MSI software applications guide there to guide you through using MSI's software applications that they include with the board. And we have a, looks like an MSI black and white, what is this? This is a multilingual manual, uh, looks like some quick installation guides for installing uh, some of the hardware into the case. Actually, it looks like just a general guide as well as uh, some stuff about Fusion. Big Bang Fusion, which is another one of MSI's motherboard. Anyway, moving right along, we have here a back panel USB 3.0 bracket, so you can install that to a PCI slot at the back of your case and route this plug over to the motherboard to provide you with a couple extra USB 3.0 ports. And then we have the MSI uh, V-check cables. These are voltage checks uh, items that you can plug into the motherboard to a couple uh, leads that they have on there to check voltage uh, on the motherboard itself. And that is about all for accessories. Next up, we will take a detailed look at the motherboard itself. First, let me get it out of this anti-static bag. So for starters, here's a look at the back of the motherboard. So you can see we have a dark brown PCB. We also have uh, Phillips head spring-loaded screws connecting the heatsink fans to the, or the heat sinks, I should say, to the motherboard. So you can remove those fairly easily if you're going to do water cooling setup or something along those lines. Next up here is the front of the board. We can see we have an overall brown, black, and blue uh, color scheme. And uh, there's just a look at the motherboard overall. 
Uh, let's go in more detail over all of the ports and whatnot. So we're going to start way down here in the bottom right with our front panel connectors. Those are all these two pinout headers right here, which you can use to connect your uh, front panel on-off switch, and hard drive activity indicators, and all those sorts of things. Next to those, we have one, two, three USB 2.0 front panel connectors. So you can use those to connect some USB 2.0 ports on the front or back of your case. Um, actually, right up here, which is very difficult to see, but there's actually some LEDs, and those are indicating what, which BIOS is enabled because this is a dual BIOS motherboard. Uh, so you can switch back and forth if you're doing BIOS updates. It makes it much uh, more safe to update your BIOS having a backup that you can switch to just in case your power goes out while you're doing it or something along those lines. So dual BIOS enabled. This is also has an EFI touch BIOS, so it is a hybrid and it does allow for certain EFI capabilities such as booting from hard drives that are larger than 2.2 terabytes. But moving along, right here we have a blue connector. This is a front panel USB 3.0 connector. So you can use the included bracket to connect that to a couple more USB 3.0 ports at the back of your case or if you have a case with a front panel or with a USB 3.0 plugs on the front and a header, you can connect that right there. Next to that, we have some surface mounted power and reset buttons. That's very nice, especially if you're doing an out of the box build. You can use those to turn your, your computer build on or off uh, to do testing or anything like that. Next to that, we have a COM port. That's a serial connector for connecting a serial device. Next to that is an SPDIF connector. And then finally, we have an audio header for your front panel mic and headphone jacks for HD or AC97 audio connectors. Uh, next up, let's go over our PCI Express or PCI area. And for starters, we have one, two, three black single speed PCI Express ports for connecting PCI Express cards. Uh, in between and below those, we have a couple physical 16 speed PCI Express ports. So the top one here is full 16x, and that's where you want to plug in your video card. If you're going to be running Crossfire or SLI, you will plug your second video card in down here. They are triple slot spaced, so that allows a little bit more uh, uh, area for heat dissipation in between the cards. This lower slot, uh, based on the fact that we're Z68 and the wiring I can see here, is going to run at 8x, so 16 and 8x if you're running uh, Crossfire or SLI. Finally, below that, we have two black legacy PCI slots for your older PCI devices that are still using the standard PCI interface. Uh, moving along, right over here, under this MSI logo and this heatsink is our Z68 chipset. Uh, that enables a lot of stuff on the board. For instance, uh, most of our serial ATA ports. Uh, so here we have uh, the four white serial ATA ports on the outside. Those are all six gigabit per second. The six on the right here are all controlled by the Z68 chipset. So again, uh, Serial ATA Revision 3, six gigabit per second here on the two white ports. Serial ATA Revision 2, uh, three gigabits per second on the black ports here. And Z68 does allow for uh, RAID, wait, wait, I know this, uh, allows for HCI mode, RAID 0, 1, 5, or 10 controlled by the Z68 chipset. We also have a Marvell controller. This is a Marvell 9128 controller uh, for these two ports over here. So you can connect a couple more Serial ATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second devices, and that allows also for RAID 0 or RAID 1. Let us continue. And real quick, I'm going to mention our system fan headers. We have two of them right here that are three pins. We also have one more further up here that's a four pin, so PWM controlled. Uh, system fan header, so you can connect up to three, actually I should say four, there's one more over there. So you can have four system fans connected directly to the motherboard, one of those being PWM controlled. Right here is our 24 pin motherboard main power connector. Right above that is our OC Genie uh, simple overclocking switch, so you can turn that on or off with a simple push of a button to do the OC Genie that's enabled by MSI. Uh, right above that are our voltage leads. That's where you can use those accessories that I showed you earlier to connect those to test uh, some more detailed system voltage. Next to that are our DIMM slots. Uh, we can support up to four DDR3 DIMMs, and it supports overclock speeds of up to 2,133 megahertz. Uh, these are dual channels, so you want to use at least two sticks uh, kits in order to enable dual channel mode, and you'll want to use 1.5 volt DIMMs since this is a Sandy Bridge motherboard. Um, next to that is a 4-pin CPU fan header, so you want to plug in your CPU heatsink fan right there. 
Right above that is another bank of LEDs that will indicate which, uh, C which power phase the CPU uh, VRM area is operating at. So you got some surface mounted LEDs that will indicate that. Uh, and then we have the actual CPU socket area itself. Once again, an LG LGA1155 socket. Uh, you will want to install a second generation Intel Sandy Bridge, uh, Intel Core processor, code name Sandy Bridge right there. Uh, and then right around that we have our VRM area. So we can see our super ferrite chokes as well as the uh, other military class two components that MSI has built into the uh, VRM area. And then we have a couple uh, heat sinks here with a heat pipe design running between them to ensure for adequate heat dissipation of the uh, VRMs, especially if you're going to be doing overclocking. Very nice to have those. Uh, lastly, for the front of the board, up here on the top left, we have a four or eight pin EPS power connector. You can use an older four pin uh, connector there if you are not overclocking. If you are overclocking, it's recommend to, recommended you get a power supply that has the eight pin EPS connector so you can provide as much power as possible to the CPU. And you plug that in right there. Lastly, let's move on to the inputs and outputs on the back of the motherboard. So starting over here on the left, we have a green and purple mouse or keyboard PS2 slot. Below that, we have uh, two USB 2.0 ports. This is most likely a clear CMOS switch. Uh, I'll verify that in just a second. Next to that, we have a couple audio outs, a coax on the top or a Toslink audio out on the bottom. Next to that, a couple more USB 2.0 ports. Uh, we'll talk about the video in just a second, but right here is a Realtek uh, RT, wait, RTL 8111E uh, gigabit LAN port. Below that we have two more USB 3.0 ports. And then over here on the right side we have our uh, motherboard audio outs. And the audio is a Realtek ALC892 chip and it has 8 channel audio with jack sensing built in and it is Azalea 1.0 spec compliant. Uh, as mentioned, we do have video outs on this board, and that is because Sandy Bridge CPUs have an integrated GPU, and the Z68 chipset allows you to use that GPU via the video outs on the back of the board. So we have an HDMI out right there, we also have a DVI out, and we also have an old school VGA out if you have an older monitor that you want to connect. And using those will connect to the integrated GPU in your Sandy Bridge processor. Uh, but bear in mind that since this is Z68, you're also fully able to plug in a discrete video card into your 16x port right there. And you can also use the Virtue technology by Lucid to switch back and forth between them. And just in case you thought I forgot, yes, this is a clear CMOS button. So if you want to reset your BIOS to the factory defaults, you can hit that button and that will allow you to do that without having to go into your case. And that's going to wrap it up for today's overview. Once again, this has been the MSI Z68A GD65 B3 revision with the 1155 socket for Intel second generation core processors and the Z68 chipset. My name is Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more just like it, head over and subscribe to our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next time.